Hey, hey, hey. Right now, I want to do a, a confidence interval for the proportions, um, all four steps. Okay, so for P hat. And I'm going to do this a little differently than I've done before. I'm not going to write it out, um, at least not this time. So I need you to turn to your textbook and go to page 533. And I'm doing a review problem. I'm doing review 8.3. Now, as we look at this 8.3, please read the scenario. Now, please remember, as we do these um, confidence intervals, and in the very near future, our hypothesis test, there are four steps. The, four, the first step is, and they're nice enough to put it right here, is to state. We are going to state or define the parameter of the setting we are going to plan. As we do the planning, please remember we're looking at our looking at our SRS, we're looking for our 10% rule, and then we're looking at our normality. Then here as we look at C, here this is the do portion. And then finally here is the um, for part D, which we are doing the conclusion. So, I don't know how well you can see that, so let me try something. So, this is what I was saying. State the parameter. Plan, which means our, um, our conditions and assumptions. Do is, when we do the math, the construction. And conclusion is answering the question, bringing it all together. Okay, so let's get started. So define the parameter, the do. The parameter in this particular case is the proportion of all adults. So let's look at it right here. It is the adults that are 18, so the adults 18 year or, or, or older, um, that said they favor football. Now, listen to how I phrased, though. I said it's the proportion. That is our P. So let me show you. Okay, so as you can see here, the proportion of all the adults who say that football is their favorite sport to watch on TV. Okay? Now, this part that they have down here, it may not equal that because of proportion. Honestly, yes, I guess we do need that because we need that to do this portion right here that explains how to no, explain to someone that doesn't know anything about, um, about statistics. And there's another part that says... Why I can't read it. Um, why we can't say that thirty seven percent of all adults would say that. Well, we already know the answer to that because here it may not equal to thirty seven percent. That's just one sample. Samples vary. We talked about that several times. I can take the um, the sample of our class, how many people favor um, football? Yeah, I know you're not adults yet, but close enough. Go to Boykin's class. That's another sample. I really, we all believe that the chances of every class having the exact same percent, even our class having 37%, is slim to none. And I've got six classes, and I know that there's no way that, I shouldn't say no way, but it is extremely unlikely that any one of my classes are going to say 37%. Nevertheless, if I had any two classes that say the exact same percent of favoring it. So, that is the second part of the question. My main concern here is the part that we're talking about in the yellow. Okay, the define the parameter of the setting, that first statement. 
So, that part right there. Next, as I slide, we are looking at check the conditions and assumptions. So, as I've kind of mentioned to you before, yes, we're looking at our SINs. We're trying to see if it's an SRS or an RS. We're looking for the 10% rule. And yes, we are looking for normality. Okay, so randomness is given. The, here's my 10% rule. So the, temp, um, the sample size is, they do it that way. How do I like to do it? Let me find something to write with. That the 10% rule is, how many do I have? 1,000 times 10 is going to be less than, and here, um, all the adults. And there's an L in adults, and there's a U in adults. Obviously, I screwed that up. Okay, and yes, our large count condition. Remember, our large count condition is just our N times P, N times P naught. Where did they get these numbers from? I'll show you. And remember, I don't write them down because I really don't feel like it, but this is where they got it from. So remember, N times P, which is equal to 1,000 times 370 over 1,000. That cancels out. That gave me the 370. Okay? Um, so you could always put the 370, or you can continue the math without the crossing, saying it's less than or equal to 10. Okay? And then that's N times 1 minus P. And that's 1,000 times 1 minus the 370 is greater than or equal to 10. So yes, it is approximately normal. Please remember here, what did they do? They used the 630 because they did the math. Where did it go? They did it right here. And you're fine. And all they did was do some cancellations again. Let me show you. Right there. Case or normality has been met. So, A is your state, B is your plan. So, now let's get to see the calculations. So, as we see right here, here are the calculations. And as you look at this calculation right here, you notice that they did not write down the naked equation. But the reality is, in the very near future, you have got to write down either the naked equation or name your test. We did not name our test. So I'm going to write it right here. This is a one proportion z interval. So we either we've got to name it, or we've got to, um, and do that, or remember our other option which is giving ourselves the naked equation. And then as we give ourselves the naked equation, we can define everything. The 37% was given to you. So let's remind ourselves of how the calculator is not very nice to us. Actually, no, the calculator is amazing, so it is nice to us. But let's talk about how I'm going to get some potential errors if I don't do this right. Okay, so we know that a stat test go down to A. And let me do better with this screen. Okay, so one proportion Z. Now, if we put in 0.37, because that is the value that was given to us, right? And then we have a 1,000 and a level C. Remember, it's going to give me an error. And why is it going to give me an error? Because um, we, X has got to be a number. It's got to be countable. It's got to be what you call a discrete number. Okay, so... So I'm going to go with, instead of putting in the point, well, I am going to, um, I can do it on the other page and go 0.37 times 1,000, but I can also, as I clear here, just showing you how I'm going to start it from scratch, 0.37 times 1,000. Notice that it gives me the answer of 370. So I can do the math here. Don't do it on the prior page. 
okay, and here it gives me the p-value, which I already knew what it was, I mean, not the p-value, the um, um, proportion per, um, percentage, and everything worked. I got no errors. And here is my confidence interval, which takes me down to the final answer that they have right here for your confidence interval. And as we look at our, so go back in your book, look at it as it self talks about your interpretation and context. We're 95% confident that the interval blank captures the true population, true mean, whatever um, value, whichever works for you, true proportion um, of all adults. And here, if you notice, this right here, what I'm about to highlight is literally, as I slide back up, what your statement is in A. Right there. And even though the state is a, pl is a pain, as we continue to move forward, you'll notice that here, what's stated here, is the same thing that is stated here. So, TTFM, ta-ta for now.